Good evening, goats and ghouls. We are back. It is Wednesday and another meeting of the Witches Movie Coven. I am Courtney Buckley, uh, ghost bait on Scared and Alone, sitting in, filling some big shoes uh, for our regular host, Patty Negri. She's home with her husband who just had surgery. So if we can all just take a second and wish them both well, that would be great. Um, but I am joined tonight, of course, by my lovely coven, and we have some special guests. So if we want to go around and maybe introduce ourselves, starting with Heather. Hi, I'm Heather Green. I am a journalist and a uh, editor at Llewellyn Worldwide. I also am the author of Lights, Camera, Witchcraft, a definitive guide to witches in American film and television. Oh, there's another one, a twin. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> And that's that's what I do, a film historian, um, and I have multiple degrees in the area, so I um, I'm impossible when we talk about film sometimes. <laughs> Amazing. And Richard Lale. Yes, that would be me. Oh, that's me. I have to do you now since you're doing <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> that's me. That's uh, me. So, <laughs> I am Richard Lale. Richard Lale is one name, not two. If I were just Richard, I'd be a. That's right. <laughs> and some people like that, and I never judge. You like what you like. So I am the gentleman psychic. I'm a psychic and a medium. I used to be a psychic and a small, but I gained some weight. And unlike <laughs> other mediums here in, in New Orleans who are all doom and gloom or love and light, I am a happy medium. In fact... I am here in New Orleans, where you can find me. I read tarot both in my private home and at Apothecary and Potions down in the quarter. Also, I am an event planner and a decorator, I guess. All of this stuff is what I do. Thank you, Richard Lale. And as we, our coven may have noticed, also we're missing Jason, um, who, in case you're wondering, my hex took effect and he is somewhere else other than here tonight. Uh, so filling in for him, we have Matthew. Hello, hello. Um, so I am a Salem witch and I am a psychic medium in the local area. Um, many good friends here on the screen. And um, I thank all of you guys and uh, our lovely producers for having me this week. Um, I am also an occult poet, so I do a lot of uh, sort of trauma work and stuff like that, deep uh, deep work with the, the paranormal and in the spiritual. And I also like to comment on film scores and everything on that front because my background is in music. So to kind of complement a little bit of the film, um, Heather, I uh, always bumped up against all of all of the, the theater and film people in school, so it's always nice to, to share the sphere again. So yeah, I agree. A little bit about me. <laughs> Awesome. And last but certainly not least, a face that you've seen around with me in traumatic situa situations, speaking of trauma, the one, the only <laughs> Gigi from Paranormal XL. <laughs> Hi, I'm the host of Paranormal XL podcast, also host of Killer Kitchen Chronicles. Um, and I am really looking forward to tonight's show. And I just got really, really nervous. So <laughs> you'll be fine it'll be great all right so tonight's show we're talking about uh a, a jack black film what's not to love about that we'll find out uh the house with a clock in its walls and for those in our chat who may not have seen it and also i'm sorry i'm getting ahead of myself welcome to everyone there in the chat we see your comments we'll be reading them uh keep I don't coming. actually see any comments but that's uh -oh. okay yeah, yeah my, I'm, my, i have them I, mine went out for a second. I have them back, so I, I'll I'll read them. Um, Richard Lale, do you have an unbiased um, synopsis for us tonight? I certainly do. Yes. So <laughs> here is the story. Um, for whatever reason, when I when I downloaded this film, they had to check my age. I don't know why. And then I realized that it was because the one that I looked up didn't have an L in it. <laughs> I knew where that was going. That was a completely different kind of film. Hmm, I bet. Um, but that now a, I'll talk about the actual film. That was a thick, this black film. <laughs> <laughs> so in the film that we are actually talking about, a house with a clock in its walls, um, this, this, <laughs> this film <laughs> is about a young boy who loses his parents and then he gets on a bus where he meets his uncle and his uncle says harry potter welcome to hogwarts 
<laughs> Not really, but it might as well have been Harry Potter. Anyway, this kid gets out of the bus and he realizes that this big old house is not only haunted, it is in fact actually they're all witches. It's inhabited by witches. His uncle is a boy witch who's a wizard. His uncle's friend is a witch, not a wizard. And they they had a roommate at one point who was evil. And then I fell asleep. And then I woke up to a poop joke with a three <laughs> act thing. And I watched the rest of it. That's and then there was something about a, a doomsday device that you had to kind of pull out of you had to kind of figure out what it was. And uh, yeah, it was a doomsday device. And apparently the, the, the evil wizard wanted to kill everybody excepting for his girlfriend. And I can't blame him with the exception of our lovely, illustrious coven. Um, and then there was the end. He's a witch. You're a wizard, Harry. And then there <laughs> Oh, and the kid screams like a little girl the entire time. Jonathan. Also, I mean, I had a fever and I was well. So I don't know if the nausea was from watching the film or if it was just from the flu. I don't know. Uh, but oh, Uncle Jonathan poop joke. That's the that's the sum up. Wow. That was entirely unbiased. I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> that no. might have been the most unbiased you've ever been. So that was that was great. A lot. Thank you so much I for mean, sharing that. And I missed a whole good like 40 minutes of it, and I still know the plot. Most of the film. <laughs> but you nailed it, nailed you nailed it. You nailed it. Uh Heather, is this movie in your book? Um, it is not. The the witchcraft movies that fall between 2018 and 2020, um, that was when I was kind of finishing. And so I didn't catch every single one. It should be. Um, it definitely qualifies. Um, the original manuscript I wrote, honestly, was done by 2018. So everything after 2018 was not in it. And then when I revised it, I added some stuff in. So this one should have been, and it's on the list I've added when I revise the book again and update it in 10, 15, 30 years, um, whenever it comes. Uh, and um, But it is a witch film, um, although it is the type of witch film that you're going to see not when witchcraft films are popular. This is the fantasy witchcraft film that's much more akin to what you, it feels like a 1980s film. It feels, it captures the... Um, uh, it captures it captures something the story the innocence that a lot of the 80s fantasy magical films capture it feel it's very simple um it's almost like um a harry potter as as richard lowe <laughs> pointed out um meets um a halloween town meets um uh goosebumps Goosebumps, yes, very much so. <laughs> it had, kind of has that kind of, it sits in that kind of space where the witchcraft isn't witchcraft in the way our myths and our stories tell us, which is way more sinister or even, even this is not, again, most witchcraft films tell the story of a girl coming of age or they talk, they're lying it to girl power, women's power. This is not that film. This is the sorcerer, this is the sorcerer's apprentice. This is Harry Potter. So it's usually films that contain the, the warlock, as they call themselves, the male witch um, with little boys are much more magical magician-like. They're m much more fantasy. There's a little bit of, um, uh, what do you even call, um, um, steampunk element to it. So mm. that's that's what we're looking at here. That's, this, is, this is the films you see in between. So this, this film came out in 2018. It's actually a... a um, a uh, adaptation of a book uh, bought from 1973 that was very popular, a kid's book. I didn't read it. Um, and I didn't even see the movie in 2018. I didn't know this existed, which is interesting because it was very popular. It actually made a lot of money. I think it, uh, I wrote down the numbers somewhere on my paper and I can't see them because I probably can't. Oh, there it is. So it cost $42 million. Amazing. A movie cost $42 million. We just have to step back and breathe. For a second, we think about the cost of movies <laughs> these days, and it, but it made 131 million worldwide, so it was universally acceptable. But they say that this film should have been more successful. It came out at a time where there was a lot of other films coming out, 
which apparently lessened uh, people's interest in it. And then it kind of disappeared, which is explains why I, it wasn't on my radar uh, in 2018. Um, but that's kind of the basis of it. Um, they're really Jack Black. It's got a, a big cast. It has high production value. It's got a lot going on. And I think that's that's all I have to say about it at this point. Um, I think we need to talk about um, whether we like it or not, I think. And I think we might already know Richard Lales, but that was unbiased. So I'm, I'm not sure. You actually don't even know. You don't know yet. No, I, yeah. I don't. R no. Richard Lale does love to surprise us at the end. So Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah. I was about to say um, he's acting oh, Serena right now. <laughs> I love the set. The All set right, was there's deep. a little nugget for us. Uh, the only thing I didn't, I'm going to tell you, I didn't like about the set was the chair from Frasier that was <laughs> like a dog. Like, that was the ugliest chair I have ever seen well, in my life. Well, you know, Richard Lale, that chair and some of the other elements as they walk through the house brought Beauty and the Beast. And I was waiting for them to start singing Be at My Guest. Like halfway through the movie. I'm like, oh my goodness, where is, where's Cogsworth here? Come on, start singing. <laughs> In the walls. He was in the walls. He was in the walls. And I am so impressed that you knew who I was talking about there. So, you know. Personally, I was waiting for the dancing that? brooms. <laughs> as much as I talk badly about Disney, I have seen one or three or 10 or 30 Disney. <laughs> okay. We'll eventually get you to watch them all, or at least the good ones. Um, Gigi, you have an interesting connection with this movie. Did you want to share that with us? Oh, <laughs> that it's, <laughs> I live about an hour from Marshall, Michigan. Um, the house is absolutely stunning. So the author or the original author of the book, he actually just, most of his books came or were made the thought of Marshall in his mind. He loved the historic, um, houses and whatnot that were in that town it's just that they have it's just a beautiful town that they've kept the history alive there so if you do ever get a chance see the house it's actually called the crown and house in marshall um you can take tours um and such like that it's it's look it up <laughs> that's about all i can say we're gonna have to squeeze that <laughs> so in it is very very close i have seen it that's so exciting Our crown and yeah see <laughs> How do you spell it? C C R O N I N. Cronin. Cronin. The Cronin. Yeah, we're, yes. we're gonna have to squeeze that in on our Let's trip see. to Michigan. Oh Georgia. yes. Is it, it? Can you take tours of it? Is it? Oh, is it a place you can okay. tour? Yes. Them? Yes. Yep. I don't know if you can see. It that. is. Can you see that? They actually in Marshall around Halloween time. They oh. mm. put this thing together where you can travel or not travel, but take tours of certain homes and stuff for the historical society and such. <clears throat> like there's so much history in that town. I say that about a lot of towns in Michigan, but that one by far has so many. My family actually goes there once a year for a bluegrass festival. Um, and that's what I spend my time doing, wandering around <laughs> like a crazy person, looking at these beautiful houses <laughs> <laughs> and the architecture. I love that. All right. So, so yeah. I I'm prepared with two pages of quotes for later. So if any, I'm just going to put this out there right now. If anyone steals any of my quotes that I worked so hard on, I will be calling the hex, <laughs> the hexing materials to my, um, um, I area. have a list. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm <laughs> just hoping that, that your quotes, Courtney, do not include. Ah, Uncle Jonathan. <laughs> My quotes don't, but my notes do. That was all of them. <laughs> I was about to say yeah. I have a favorite scene that I wrote that I wrote down. It may include like like a good chunk of the quotes on your list, Courtney. So that's why I stayed back and I was like, all right, I'm gonna stick with the favorite scene, and one of them may in involve a poop joke. So, <laughs> all right, well, just so watch the that? quotes because I'll light it on fire. <laughs> yeah, I know just you watch are. the scene and avoid the quotes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Leaving me commenting on commenting <laughs> on uh, on pop culture materials such as music all through college. I am very intimately familiar with the skill to do that, and also um, intimately familiar with avoiding being tossed in the harbor um, by Courtney. 
<laughs> at least you know what's hiding in my arsenal. So, um, real quick, I just I have a couple of notes that don't include quotes yet that I'd love to share. Um, watching this movie, I saw this movie in 2018 when it came out in the movie theater. It was awesome. I loved it. I bought it on DVD at that point when it came out. Like I've I've enjoyed this movie since its creation. Um, but watching it now. I haven't seen it in a few years and watching it now was a whole different experience because that mansion, the way that it's set up in the movie feels like every location I've been to on scared and alone. Um, and I have quotes <laughs> to back that up. Um, but it, so it was just a lot, the magic I loved. It was so fun. Um, and my insult repertoire has been built up immensely because of the quotes in this movie. So, so I'm very excited about that. Um, one of the scenes that made me almost lose my mind was when they came out of the like devil house and the devil mouth in the basement and all the dolls were lined up and I was like, Oh my God, this is my worst nightmare. <laughs> like, Oh no. Um, I almost texted you when I hit that scene. <laughs> yeah, I almost did this. There's a quote. <laughs> I, I think I did text you one of the quotes because it made me feel like, Oh, we, we were in this movie. It was so weird. Um, <laughs> But I think uh, also the uh, baby Uncle Jonathan with the big head at the end. Like, I literally thought, I, I'm going to have nightmares for the rest of my life. And then when he peed, lost. Lost my mind. Okay? Screaming out loud. <laughs> um, and then I had a thought. I put it all together. I wrapped it all up. Like, this whole movie happened. This whole event. This whole, like, whatever happened because Isaac, the dead guy, had ptsd and refused to see a therapist like and we made a movie about it like cool but because we we want to take over the world and rewind it um so those are my notes i'll save my i'll save my quotes for later but uh Ma matthew what did you think of this so um it's very interesting i had several notes uh on this and i i, I just kept kind of going with it because um it, I get kind of like I think Heather, you posted about something like referring to this, uh, uh, like paging the hive mind of Facebook to find older films or find older things, you know, that you cannot remember that are on the tip of your tongue. This film did that for me, essentially. So first of all, I'm gonna let everybody know I just had Indian food. So some, someone tonight on the show may be raising the dead, no matter what. <laughs> so um, that's that's uh, the the preface there. But it's very interesting. Um, so I heavily related with the movie on the fact of like Jack Black's character being like an occultist making real magic in a home that was populated by, again, what Courtney was mentioning, trauma and old memories for not only him, but uh, for Isaac beforehand and then um, Lewis losing his parents. And especially um, it sort of being set in that Midwestern vibe in, in a, granted in a, in a time period that was a little bit before. Um, it kind of, it gave me a very uh, telltale heart type of vibe, you know, mm -hmm. with uh, like Edgar Allan Poe, telltale heart um, of that, of the past lover e eating up the narrative uh, or the narrator. And it like sort of reminded me of similar traumas faced um, within like the Bible Belt area and, um, and family and you know, working with real magic to, to like uh, open up a safe space, but also having the echoes of the memories beating on the wall, you know? So it was, um, I definitely saw a lot of the, the more nuanced bases of this. Um, and also uh, within this, I was I was actually kind of surprised because um, and I know with the modern um, movies, it's a little bit you know hit or miss, but easier. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if they didn't have an occult advisor. And I don't know if you would know anything about that, Heather, on this front, because I saw a lot of um, like like going through the the texts and everything. I was like, ooh, the Kabbalion, ooh, like uh, right. like actual charts, you know, and things. Well, you know, it felt like to me, and I didn't see an advisor because there really wasn't real magic in it. Being this is a right. fantasy, and that's a very and that's a really good point to bring up. And I I was going to bring it up later. Um, yep. Is that one of the this film had so much in it. I mean, you're talking about the house being. I mean, it was a tapestry uh, landscape. It was a tapestry in that it had everything everywhere. But the so did the and as simple as the story was, they had to find this clock in the wall because it was put there by into the story was pretty simple as far as a narrative. But what they did was it was like the occult threw up on the narrative. essentially. It, 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 I would say it, it vomited because forcefully, because you had every single possible, not only um, uh, 
cue to witchcraft in it. You had everything. You had everything from Halloween pumpkins to um, spooky stuff, dolls, anything that was in a witchcraft or occult related film, um, whether it was horror or not, was in this film. They even had the one thing they came in and I'm, this is going to be a bastard quote because I'm not saying it right. He runs in looking because they need protection from something. And he goes, I got to have a malleus malavacarum somewhere. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, the Malleus Maleficarum is not going to help in that situation. <laughs> so I'm sorry if that was one of your quotes, Courtney, but this was the this was the point is that they, they like you said, the Kavalian, they, they mention every single possible occult thing. It's like someone said, stuff it in as far as we got more, to say, got to put it in, got more from everywhere, everything. Uh Kind of like the the trauma, kind of like the trauma that was based on like uh, sort of like where all of that uh, sort of uh, progression of their magic came from. Like it's, it, I guess, uh, sort of in in other words, could you say that um, where other uh, films may have misinterpreted and kind of like went along with the moral panic, it kind of like way overcompensated in the other direction. <laughs> well, I, what I think this was is I think this was supposed to be fun. And I think they just threw everything at it to make it like that tapestry. And so you have you have cues to Harry Potter with the moving pictures. You have the pumpkins. That's very much feels like a Halloween town or a Halloween movie. So you have you have stuff that feels realistic at points where it points to more of the modern witchcraft stuff. You, you just have all of it. You have the wands, you have, um, you know, the, the electricity that's movies. So it's cueing movies as well as our, our fantasy, as well as horror with the dolls. It's so the story is very simple. The plot is very simple, but, but they decorate that narrative. They hang every single thing possible on that narrative and it, it matches the landscape of the house yeah, you know one thing that i thought was you, very interesting was the um the I, I personally didn't know where they got the idea of like you become a witch or a warlock by defeating an evil spirit with your own magic and i'm like some days waking up choosing violence i may be that evil spirit you know <laughs> so i was kind of like is is that is that our new um is that our new uh like universal path <laughs> I I just don't think I don't think we need to take this movie. This movie needs to be taken about as seriously in terms of witchcraft and and anything as as a lot of these. It's a fantasy witchcraft. I think it sits there. So I don't think they intentionally were trying to do anything good or bad to witchcraft. I think they just catch. They I I think they threw a net out and caught all the things that were related to the cult in our lore and our fairy tales, there was fairy tales, you know, and just kind of just stuck it all around. And again, it matched the house, which I think is the only reason it worked. Otherwise it would have irritated me, um, but it matched the house. I think Matthew on, on your point about defeating evil by your own magic. Uh, I, I intend to do that in November. Of course I'm voting blue. That's, that's how I'm doing my part to, Void the evil, as they oh say. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, Wait. Gigi, you didn't share your uh thoughts about the movie because I, I surprised you with a question. <laughs> well, <laughs> my favorite quote I'm gonna start with that is it's my man. How dare you? Yours. All right, that all right. one I'll allow it because that was not because that list. was probably the only thing that I took seriously, I guess, out of that movie. Because how many times do we have to actually say that to somebody? Um, I know I do a lot. Um, my thoughts on the movie, I enjoyed it. It was, it was enjoyable. One of those kind of Sunday rainy day movies um, where you can do something else and that's kind of the background noise and you're not missing. Like if you look up every 10 minutes, you you caught back up. Um, or if you fall asleep it, it is for very 40 cliche. minutes, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And he didn't <laughs> miss a thing. Um, it, uh, it is cliche. I do think it's supposed to be that way. So it kind of reminded me of kind of like how the scary movies are set up where they throw it all in one and they're kind of not making fun of it, but making fun of it, the dry humor type thing. But I, I want to say, but there was also an innocence at the very beginning, like when he, Jonathan was shown, um, 
the universe. I don't something about that part. Like I, I put down my phone and everything and it took me back to being like five years old for whatever reason. And then the giant lion, bad kitty came out. <laughs> yes. And I was like, what the heck took the innocence yeah. right away. But you, I did have a few seconds of feeling like a child again. And, and that was amazing. I, that's like, oh, I took that yeah. out of the movie and it's, it's my magic, not yours. Like those were the two important things I guess that I took out of that, but it is cliche. I think it's one of those things again, where it's ha ha. That's kind of funny. That's funny. That's like, anyway, I do enjoy his movies. Again, it's one of those background noise type things where I can put it on, fall asleep for 40 minutes, <laughs> wake up and be like, oh, that was a movie. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I didn't hate it. On the... I, yeah, I definitely get you on the uniqueness and on the, um, how, how do I say, the endearing quality. Mm -hmm. um, because it, I guess, uh, Heather, to your point of like, I, I, now, I now see what you're talking about of throwing throwing the spaghetti at the wall occult, uh, in, in the occult terms, or the Cthulhu at the wall, if you if you will. Because mm -hmm. I swear, <laughs> Isaac, in all sense of the terms, is a chaos magician, and not in how society thinks of chaos. But like it reminded me of when I first started magic in general, because... I think a lot of my response to it was coming, you know, growing up in a very deeply religious home and um, in the Bible Belt. And I was just kind of like transported to a kid again on the occult sense. I'm like, it's my cabinet of curiosities, you know, all all over. But, um, you know, uh, to, I'm not going to spoil any quotes, Courtney. But um, one of my favorite uh, favorite scenes was the um, your magic is unique, you know, um, I, just after the um, just after the uh, planetarium uh, planet uh, sort of. The, the universe scene um, and how they kind of address that and everything. I, I, I definitely am, am, am uh, bold in myself with that uh, that very sentiment. And it's kept me alive uh, for very long. Uh, you, you know, with the sentiment that we can't constantly grow and change all the time. And I think that's important with, with kind of what we do as witches. But um, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it just reminded me a lot of that. Um, at my lovely cabinet of curiosity. It was a whole sort of like endearing sort of, uh, making your own magic out of trauma and revisiting things and you know um and i i loved the idea of the forbidden box you know with the with the book and everything um and i like to think most days that uh, you know don't we all as witches always have some sort of forbidden little box off into the corner as well <laughs> and that i think goes back to the sense of childhood but also the very real sense you know some as courtney knows some of the things that we collect you know um uh so i think you know, the little sprink sprinkles of reality through that, even though it was very fantasy, just really kind of like had me in that endearing moment, which is why um, I, you know, I, I didn't really pay much attention to the occult vomit. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to answer a question that came. I can't see the comments. They're they're blank for my first screen this time. So um, I, I saw that. Uh, yeah. How much did it came out in the U.S.? It was like 60, 60 something million and then worldwide, it was like is also sixty something million. And I think I believe it said it was one hundred and thirty one million. It's made to date, so it's made a lot of money. It's it's considered very pop. It was very popular when it came out, and is considered successful, even though they believe it could have made more money. And I I want to just with that question answered, I want to go back to this sense of childhood. And and so when I watched it for the first time today, um. I could see that when I was young, I would have loved it. And again, watching it now, there's parts of it that bother me that I think should have been fixed. I don't, I didn't love the kid. I didn't think he was a good choice. Acting wise, he didn't match up to the other actors who did a beautiful job. Um, I think the production value was gorgeous. The sets were gorgeous. The house was gorgeous. All of that stuff didn't bother me. Some of it was a little hokey, but I think with all of the things it was throwing out, the horror, the fairy tales, the, all the pieces, it all worked. Um, the story was fine. Um, I did not like the baby Jack Black. I think it was <laughs> far. I was like, no, do not do that. That just <laughs> ruined it. It was a little, there was, but kid movies tend to have a little bit of that hokey stuff. I think go going back to what I said earlier is that this recalls movies from the eighties and it, it, and it is a, um, an Amblin film. So having, that production company behind it, that PG um, Disney backing kind of thing makes sense. And this kind of feels very much again, like the, the young boy uh, 
coming of age stories where this one is not so much of um, the coming of age story where the false father has to be killed. That kind of Joseph Campbell story, although it's it's sort of there a little bit because he has to overcome this evil male figure. Um, so you have it in there. But what you have also is the young boy misbehaving and having to solve the problem himself. And this is sort of like matches Gremlins, which is also another Amblin film. So if you think about in that story, and I think that's what it recalls, or in that story, the young, he's older, gets this magical creature, accidentally turns him into gremlins, and they has to save the town from the gremlins. It's, so you have that sort of, that's the model of this one. So I think I could see myself liking this. It feels very mid 80s, early 80s, in, and I, it was written in the 70s. So, you know, and that's a whole decade earlier, but it feels like that. It feels like something that reckons back to a simple story with magic that we could love as kids, you know, and, and that's what it, I know I would have liked it. I would have shown it to my kids if they were young um, at the time in 2018, although they, anybody could watch a kid's film. It's, but I, I generally speaking, I, I, think this was pretty good. Yes, Hocus Pocus is another one that has that feel. Um, Hocus Pocus was more <clears throat> centered to the witchcraft storyline that we we expect. This one's more akin to the to the fantasy fantasy magic stuff we saw in the early '80s, and then again in the in the mid 2000s, you see it again. Um, um, so I, I I thought it was I thought it was pretty decent. Um, not my favorite film in the whole world, but definitely I didn't mind it. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and the quote. Um, I want to just hop into two things. One is um, talking about like the nostalgia of childhood. I had a little bit of a different moment where um, I really like I got emotional because I felt represented as a witch in this movie in the way that Lewis made his own spell at, out of the definitions like and just that's what I do. It's like haphazard. I don't I call myself a bad witch not because I do bad things, which I do, but Jason, because man, Jason, as we can, can tell that, that Jason is not it? here. Isn't that chaos um, magic? I was about to say that's the onus of all my practice so we're not too dissimilar in that so. um but it was it's just like i i'm like a lazy witch like i'm not gonna go out and like plan the things it's like i feel it in the moment and i'm gonna grab whatever's on my desk here's a pen here's the microphone i unplugged <laughs> and i'm gonna make something out of this you know with a napkin and that's what he did but it like that's what gave him that confidence and and he had that like coming to power moment because he liked the definitions so he started screaming out definitions of words and suddenly he made something happen and i think that therein is where it wasn't about defeating the evil spirit to make him a warlock it was finding that confidence and that's where he got it so i literally sobbed during that scene watching it now because i i hadn't really had that moment yet and I've I, when I saw it the first time, and I have since, uh, you know, since seeing it again, had had that moment. And so it was really nice to feel. I feel like this is maybe the other than like some fun quotes in some of the other movies that we've we've seen. I feel like this was the first time that I was really represented, and it it felt really nice. So I I it made me enjoy it that much more. Um, the sorry, go ahead. No, go on. I was gonna say. I was just now I'm going to feel really badly when I give mine. I'm going to really badly when I give mine. You're next. Okay, you're well, I'll see you next I'll week. Tell you. Okay. Um. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, since I'm next. I'll, I'll, I'll rip the Band-Aid off. Uh, Eli Roth, I feel, was wrong in the directorial position of this film. Because oh. Eli Roth was more slasher films than anything. And <laughs> this book was written by someone who had the illustrations by one of my favorite artists, Edward Gorey. Now, for all his trouble, uh, Tim Burton would have brought in something along the lines of more of a Beetlejuice, or I think that Tim Burton's art would have looked more like the illustrations because that it, he gets that dark, macabre, the, the sort of spooky that Edward Gorey got. Eli Roth? brilliant in so many things but he's he's better in his slasher horror films as opposed to throw up magic movies turn your light 
off. I know it. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 you know, <laughs> no, but you, hold on, Heather, I'm real quick before you go there. I, do that. I turned it up. The, the, oh my God. <laughs> the, second, the second thing that I was about to say was about Eli Roth as the director. Because I like him. Go ahead. Turn your oh, lights on or off or whatever. Eli Roth was horrible as the director. Uh, the kid was... The, the kid was okay. The kid was not nearly as good as as um, the, the kids from from uh, it, Pennywise. He was not oh. nearly as good as uh, the kids from Stranger Things. He was not nearly as good as as Harry Potter. He was he was not really he was no. he was okay. He no. was okay. But I did like his I did like his encyclopedia spell. I think that was clever. The encyclopedia spell was clever. I'm making an encyclopedia spell right now. So oh. I am certain you are, but this is a <laughs> PD rated show. So you can't say those words on it. <laughs> I was about to say, though, Courtney, how, how you feel about Richard, uh, Richard Lale's position on Eli Ross. You could totally whip up the, one of the water fountain things that Lewis did. Uh, the the splashy splash, you know, <laughs> where he, he got the the kid enemy in the hallway. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> we'll see. I, I think, Richard Lale, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think Eli Roth actually did a brilliant job in, in balancing it. So I think he did actually really well. I And I get what you're saying, though. It would have been a different film if you would have had... Um, what's his face do it? I think it would have been... <laughs> I get a brain just... Burton. Brain, Tim Burton. Tim Burton, thank you. I think Tim Burton's brilliant, and he would have captured this in a totally different way. The film would have been totally different um, because his production value, he actually, his filming, he's part of the film as the director. A Tim Burton film is a Tim Burton film. And so, yes, he would have had the uh, Edward Gorey stuff much more, cl much closer. But if we can separate that out and say, okay, that would have been a different film. This film, I I thought uh, for a, a slasher horror picture guy, I thought he actually balanced that really, really well. It wasn't scary at all. Would a five-year-old be scary? Probably a few of the things, but um, I, I don't know. That's my opinion. I, I, I mean, think I am a problem. Yeah. I'm much older than five and that <laughs> continuous poop joke. That, that I didn't like. Scare me to death. <laughs> No, I think I, I didn't like the poop joke either. I, <laughs> I, I feel like I feel play. like, but I feel like if Tim Burton, like just as an example, because that's the example you gave, if Tim Burton had made this film, it would have been a film that we had already seen. It would have been something. It would have been. It wouldn't have been true. what it was. And what it was, whether you liked it or you didn't, was something. It was something magical, and it was something. I think different because I look at this. I had an he. My son was eight when this came out. This was like his first stepping stone into horror movies. And now he's a horror aficionado. So no, it wasn't scary to us, but it was a little scary to him, and it was enough to like wet his whistle to get him into that genre. So I think it is a nice balance. I think it's nice that Eli Roth did something different. I love Eli Roth movies. So I think it's. I I think going into it, I I had I was not as unbiased as Richard Lale with his synopsis. I was. <laughs> I was biased because it was an Eli Roth movie. And so I was excited about it no matter what. But I, I do feel like if it was Tim Burton, it would have been the same Tim Burton movie. Like it wouldn't have been as special. I think I would love to see Tim Burton do it at some point. I said, sure. it, whether it's do yeah. acclamation or whatever, I think his version, because I think it would be, I think it would be so different. Yeah. And and I think, it, I think it, there's space for that too. I think, I think there could be a, another movie with him doing it because it would, it just it would be balanced differently, um, and it hopefully would have a different main character. Because I agree a hundred percent that act actor, and you know he tried, but he just that and the poop jokes were my least favorite. And the baby <laughs> and the baby, I want to say the baby. Jesus. No, that's a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you on the baby, baby Jesus. <laughs> Like I'm literally, that's one of my only things. <laughs> when it started peeing, though, I lost my no. mind. No, I, I already have a thing about adult was... babies that it, I just can't. No. Th that and mannequins. I collect dolls everywhere, right, Heather? You would love my my space, but <laughs> um, like but I um, and most of them in spirited. But I just cannot do when adults are portrayed as babies. It just makes my skin crawl. Um, yeah, when it comes to that. Wah, wah. Well, I can't, I can't even. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk into the harbor. But um, <laughs> it reminded me. 
the, it reminded me a little of uh, from the mask with Jim Carrey that I, I didn't like it. I, I did didn't not, like that part either. I that part where she changes. Mm. I was no, gonna say, yeah, but see, that. okay, but that was so. I I am so sick of watching like stupid, cheesy, like terrible CGI, and yet it was CGI, obviously. But it was an it was like unnerving in a way that like I feel like only a horror director could have made it unnerving. It it was gross to look at, and I I liked that aspect of it. I don't want to see it in my dreams. But I think that it was like that if they were going to do that, it could have been a lot worse. And so it was like nicely unnerving. I feel like that. Was Didn't they do that in Harry Potter? Isn't that there's another movie where the they where they Polyjuice spin potion. All that. There you go. Polyjuice potion. See, yeah. more, I would have said anything. <laughs> I would have said something about the production had the CGI quality been different. <laughs> but, you know, I, I that's where I'm kind of like I, more so happy now. But again, Heather, like I was saying with the the occult vomit, um, I'm, I'm hanging on to everything I can with this movie um, because like I, I saw, you know, when uh, Serena was um, portraying his mother and coming into I was just like, oh, man, if somebody was adept enough at astral projection. And shape shifting. I was just like, I was holding on to anything at that point, just to, <laughs> just to, you know, within my childhood. Because what I liked about this film is it is that classic, ooh, mysterious house that comes alive, and it it, it brought me back to again the the uh, going out to the Reddits and the hive minds to find all the other films that I in the like late '90s and early 2000s, '80s and up that I remember like growing up with. And there was a, a film that um, I can't remember. It was on, on either Disney or Nick or one of the one of the two that I, it was lost to memory for like ten years for me. And and you go, like people can probably relate with this, where you're like, I need to find this pop culture thing, you know? It was um it was called uh, the the Three Investigators in the Secret of Terror Castle, which is kind of interesting. And it was like 2003. It was like about it was a, a little bit more paranormal, but it was about a steam powered house and uh, that magic kind of coming through that. And then it reminded me of Disney's Now You See It, which is more of a um like uh like close up magicians realizing they have like real magic in that kind of way and uh they're in this big castle like um doing this competition so it kind of like picked at other films and i guess that's where the the occult vomit kind of hit for me it mm -hmm. it was uh providing reference to a lot of the other inner child kind of things for me I, so i didn't take it as a complete negative so you know what i i will tell you matthew you're right it does hit a lot of other occult films and movies and this one actually, I remember seeing this film the first time I actually ever really saw this film was way back in 1999 when Matthew Lillard was in 13 Ghosts. And Excellent was, movie. That was a great movie. No, it's a, I love 13 Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I was least, waiting for I'm it. On, I'm, I'm on the defensive. <laughs> you are. At least 13 <laughs> Ghosts. At least, at least it was like... You, you 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 know there was reason but i was about to say somewhere akin to your three men a night joke right that is <laughs> yes that's so true <laughs> that's it that's it otherwise i would just say it was just a little old hole in the wall but that means something. okay all right <laughs> wow pg any wrap final it up thoughts? oh my gosh <laughs> no um Overall, it was an okay movie, a good one, like I said, for a Sunday, rainy day type thing, at home with the kids type of thing. Watch it through once. I, It's one of those ones. It's, I want, don't want to say one and done because this was the second time that I've seen it. I did enjoy it. It was, it was okay. Didn't hate it. Didn't love it. You didn't mind it. Didn't mind it. We're going to get you. We have to get you a shirt. Yeah. Didn't mind it. <laughs> All right. Would you guys mind if I took some some time for my two pages of quotes? Because Do there's a lot of them. Two pages of quotes. <laughs> Please. Um, okay. I so, know we have a Mally smell of a car around here somewhere. Oddly enough, not one of my quotes. Um, I was very busy <laughs> typing while I was watching it's it. It's for summoning up the quotes is what it is. <laughs> there you go. I got um, one. Oh, That's there cool. we go. <laughs> Hit Richard Lale over the head with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Richard Lale. I love you very much. Oh, um, no. You can, all right. you can don't tempt me with a good time. I mean, <laughs> I haven't been smacked so good in years. All right. Anyway, um, so John, in the beginning, Jonathan says when they walk in the house, 
Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Lewis says, that's a lot of clocks. And Jonathan says, well, what constitute a, a, constitutes a lot is really a matter of personal taste. For me, this is the perfect amount of clocks. And I felt seen by that quote, too, because how many not dolls do I need to have? Um, All of them. Every, yeah, every exchange between Jonathan and Florence in the beginning of the movie, which was an insult, I was cry laughing. Um, Jonathan says, this old hag is my next door neighbor, Mrs. Florence Zim Zimmerman. Um, and Florence says, I'm relieved to see you didn't inherit your uncle's freakishly oversized head. And he says, huh, says the woman who literally looks like a Q-tip. And she says, oh, look, the giant head is angry. And then um, he said, my God, did that withered purple skeleton just speak? Uh, and I was crying. Um, th the way that Jack, Pla Jack Black says uh, tissue. I was, he said it like multiple times. I was like, please tissue. say it again. Tissue. Do you need a tissue? Um, again, an exchange between Jonathan and Florence. She says, hey, gorilla groin. And he says, hold your horses, you scarecrow. Um, and then when he's talking about he's going to drown his sorrows in hot chocolate. And he says, Florence, like asking if she'd like some. And she says, delighted. And he says, get your own. And she said, choke and die. And I was very excited by that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Florence says, you know, uh, this one is a good one because I th this is not a funny one. This one speaks to my heart a little bit because there were some of those in there too. Uh, Florence says, you know, I found that all one really needs in this world is one good friend. And isn't that true? Um, Jonathan and Lewis are talking. Um, oh, when jo Lewis is running out of the house after the house is like doing all kinds of stuff. Um, and Jonathan says, I'm sorry you had to see that. And Lewis is freaking out and he goes, no, no, no. Houses don't attack you. And if they do attack, you're definitely not supposed to say sorry. You had to see that. And then he goes, and this was the quote that I think I texted you, Gigi, um, because this holds a special place in our hearts. Uh, he goes, is this place haunted? Are you going to axe murder me? You're going to axe murder me, aren't you? <laughs> um, Jonathan says, what smell? What smells of rancid sulfur? And then the yeah. cat, the... the <laughs> Bad kitty. That's the, first, that's the first time that joke happened. Yeah. But the cat, I'm sorry. Farts are funny. I'm the mom of a teenage boy. <laughs> I'm a teacher. I have little kids. That farts are funny. And the cat farted out leaves and it was, <laughs> it was hilarious. But bad kitty, yes. Um bad kitty. Jonathan says, we don't know where the clock is or what it does, except something horrible. No, we gotta do the responsible thing. Lie to the kid. So that was funny um and then me as a mom um when <laughs> jonathan pulled up to the school in his car and he's beeping the horn and he's like lewis lewis can't you see me i'm over here and he's like, lewis is like, oh my God. It's, your, it's your uncle johnny <laughs> and that's me embarrassing my son because i recently learned all the teenage slang that i'm not supposed to say and i say it all the time and it's, oh, it's just me my, too. oh yeah I'm, I'm oh all the time whenever Literally i can ground me I'm, i text it to him and he's yeah. like i will stop, stop. talking to you <laughs> yeah. good, good, good um, on you and then we touched on this one a little bit but i think the whole quote is worth saying um <clears throat> um when it's it's jonathan florence and lewis and it's i think right before right during or after that universe scene um and they say you're the only you in the whole universe that makes your whole style of magic just crazy unique one in a hundred million kajillion so i can give you the right books teach you the right spells but that last one percent that's up to you and i think that's, that's great a great way to look at it um and then <laughs> Richard, they'll get ready with your light switch. Um, <laughs> Lewis, <laughs> Lewis says, so how do I find my magic style or whatever it is? And Jonathan says, it's in there somewhere. You just have to quiet down and listen. And so he makes a face and he says, well, now it looks like you're pooping. Um, <laughs> um, when he's playing the, the saxophone and Florence says, be a deer, fetch a knife and stab me in the ears. Um, and then this one, this quote, I wrote down a couple different times when they said it because it made my heart feel very full. Um, when they're talking about, it, he says, I was the black swan of the family. Um, and then he tries to correct him. And then after they have their little exchange, he said, I think I might be a black swan too. And Jack Black says, well, then we're just a flock of swans. But then he corrects and him. And that's again. what says, I bevy. texted you. Yeah. A bevy. Um, which comes up again a couple times. Um, 
later on, uh, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but later on when Jonathan is telling him he shouldn't be in the house, it's not safe, and I wish he would never come, like my heart is breaking. And then Lewis cries, but we're a bevy of swans. And I lost my mind and I cried a lot. <laughs> um, but then at the end, um, when they're all together and he asks Florence, do you want to be black swans with us? And she says, well, can I be a purple swan? And he was like, deal. Um, which is great because everybody, you can be a family, but you can be unique in your family, um, in your chosen family. Um, three gongs. Last time it was four. It's three. What happens when it gets down to one? Well, we'll hide in the basement like sensible people. And I don't know any sensible people that are going to basement. I'm quite unsensible and going to basements a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're not sensible either. Um more insults. Well, at least I live to see the per uh, the purple pachyderm get stumped. And he, she says, I don't know how much longer any of us will be living weird beard. And he says, cranky old crone. And she says, mush brush. And he says, hag face. And she goes, oh, go braid your back hair. <laughs> uh, oh, Isaac says, I like the boy. An orphan with a love for Captain Midnight warms my dead heart. Um... And then the last two, not funny, but that coming to power moment, which I have to quote because I love it. Um, Isaac says, of all people, Florence, I thought you'd want this. I know what losing your family did to you. You're too sad and broken to work any real magic. And she like gears up and she says, maybe I was, but now I'm indomitable. And then boom. And I actually wrote next to it. Yes, queen, like get him. <laughs> so yeah. That was fun. <laughs> Um, and then Lewis had that moment too, where he goes, I'm going to show you what a little weird can do. Mm -hmm. So those folks are my quotes. Everyone's free to say things now without fear of getting asked. Those, that's <laughs> I want to jump in if it's okay about your um, love and attention to the, um, uh, him, him using the, his own spell. And you said that really spoke to you. I think that's really important. I just want to bring that up because that is actually the whole premise behind folk ma most folk magics. Most people who perform magic over the centuries didn't have books like we have now, didn't have prescribed rituals. There were ceremonial magicians and occult stuff going on that did, but most people in the world didn't have the money to get all the things. They didn't have the education to, to know all the things. They didn't have all those studies that we, we associate. What they did was they grabbed a they grabbed a pencil, they grabbed some water, they spit, they, you know, they used what they had, they did whatever, and they made a spell. And they said, what was it? It was just, that's just correspondences, known um, uh, sympathetic magic of, of, that's what magic is at its core. So I don't think, you know, when you said you, you felt seen by that, I think, I mean, I'm just going to say is like, most of the world practices the magic that you practice. Most of the world you know, has for centuries. So that's the whole premise. So you should be seen. You're doing it the way. <laughs> well, it was a moment for me because it took me so long to call myself a witch because I didn't understand that. And I thought I had no. to do the right thing the right way with the book, with the right tools, with the whatever. And I hadn't earned the title of witch because I didn't do things that way. And I had that coming to power moment when I realized that that didn't matter. And it was my craft and it was me what I did. So that mimicked my coming to power moment where it was like, oh, okay, yeah, nobody gets to name me a witch. I named me a witch. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's an important thing. Oh, somebody who prides themselves on um on both the detail and like say like evidential practice and evidential mediumship especially but as a chaos magician i was really endeared by his use of the eight ball because that is not out of the question for me these days you know when it, talk about folk magic um and uh, speaking of especially with jokes i i i'm i'm, I'm about to write a i i swear it's on the list a, a jo magical joke book about sympathetic magic um some pun if you will um and, and very much in that similar kind of a aspect and richard lale speaking of quotes that courtney didn't touch um uh i, I thought about you and your similar sense of humor and it r reminded me when we went around salem together uh when uh they were they were talking about the cookies and florence was like weird is like the nuts in my cookies it's the nuts that makes things interesting and it was fun, really, to watch Kate Blanchett try not to lose it on camera for a hot second. And especially it endeared my proud little uh, gay occultist heart as well So <laughs> for a hot second. So, 
All right. So having I, having said all that, we have one thing left to do, and I do want to apologize because I had the the comments with me for a while mine have been a blank screen for a while too but if we put them up on screen we can take a tally it is time for wands up or wands down on the house with a clock and its walls oh boy oh all right I'm so wands up from clock back. oh god we lost matthew <laughs> very very <laughs> up very high for matt um, up for gg up for me What's that like a I'm, like a one o'clock or oh, three o'clock? I'm, I'm, I'm a mid, mid range. It's it was right. good. It was fairly a good. A mustache, a mustache a level mustache. for Richard Lale. We've oh got Tabitha. has got wands up. But, you know, but I'll I can't tell you see this. the comments, so I can't see what are. Uh, I'm I'm going by what's on the screen. Up up wands up for Jack Black. I'm gonna say wands up for the aesthetic for the house. Wands yeah, down for the kid. Yeah. Insult book up. I'll, I'll, I'll give it an insult book up. Jack Black and Kate Blanchett are getting my clock up. Okay, I'm just, leave, I'm just leaving clock up this them. right here at this point. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for everyone in the comments. Even though we're having technical difficulties and can't see all of them, we love that you're here. We know that you're here. We appreciate you chiming in with us. Um, why don't we real quick uh, go around now that we've done our wands up and uh, find out where everyone is going to be in the upcoming week. So Heather, do you have anything coming up? Um, I don't have anything coming up in the, I'm going to be taking a little trip uh, up to the um, Virginia um, to visit my family, but I won't be doing anything until um, live and in person until Mystic South. Um, and that's in Atlanta in July. Um, so come on out three or four days. You can buy tickets and come join us for a mystical adventure, magic, and all good things. Um, I do want to show off my new shirt that just came in the mail. Courtney's <gasps> always showing off the swag, but I have to show off my swag. Yes. Look at yes, that. Mystery scared and alone, Courtney. I'm, I'm wearing <laughs> Yes. I feel like this is a moment for me. Heather Green is wearing a scared and alone shirt. Like, oh, yeah. I'm not okay. If my if my haunted doll workshop gets selected for Mystic South, um, then I will be wearing that when I do my workshop with oh my all the God. dolls. That but um, I also want to say that we have uh, the Witches of Hollywood. Um, uh, documentary that I was in um, and with other many good uh, voices is now very easy to find. Um, so look it up. I don't know where it's airing because this just came about and people are talking about it. It's called The Witches of Hollywood. It is, I, we had, I think we have an image for it. If we don't, it's no big deal. Just look it up. It's a documentary it was made several years ago called The Witches of Hollywood. And um, yeah, you can see that it's it's more of what we're doing a little more academic and it's a documentary so that's so fun all right uh, i just uh, before we get to anyone else real quick there was a question in the chat and i was disregarding my hostly duties um next <laughs> week's movie is time bandits um so thank you for asking that uh richard lale what do you have coming up in a world where jason manke <laughs> is not present at movie coven <laughs> in a film that tim burton would have done better <laughs> oh. <laughs> I teach, you got I teach it in university magicus where you can find me um on saturdays i read tarot you can find me where i do seances in tarot either in my home here in new orleans or online at the gentleman psychic dog. I am a little bit of everywhere. I might be in your nightmares. I might be in your dreams. I don't know. Uh, that's some <laughs> of my artwork. And I'm a little bit of everywhere. I'm like Satan Claus. <laughs> that's it. Satan Claus. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. Matthew, what do you have coming up? So um, I, as usual, am at Pentagram Salem four days a week, available for uh, mediumship and charm castings and Lennermund, all the old school stuff, um, which we do by phone as well. That's at 
uh, pentagramsalem.com. And you can also find me at themystery.me, and that's mystery with M-I-S-T-E-R-Y. There's a little bit of that sympathetic magic again <laughs> for you guys. Um, and then I've got my, um, finally got my hardcover of my first occult poetry and uh when i turn conceptually human finally in i'm so proud which spells which um and then i'm halfway through my second one as well and i'm going to be posting page updates as well on that um it's a lot about trauma and fun ghosts uh aka the not so fun ghosts um and uh kind of a blend of all the human stuff uh the ghostly stuff a little bit of a uh, charms chance and my illustrations are all going to be post-it notes uh line drawings on post-it notes xeroxed into the page which is kind of cool so um it's very kind of like a, a fun fun project that i'm gonna have um and uh, that i'm going to post updates about when i get that done so and oh. um my, my youtube as well i just you know kind of kick around doing random stuff as well you could find it all at the mystery so perfect thank you and gg what do you have I have Waverly Hills coming up on Easter, <gasps> so that's exciting. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. <laughs> so number one and number two on my list is done. Um, and then the following weekend, um, actually, I'm going with Todd Bonner and Jeff and my friend Heather and Lori to an old convent, Sisters of Holy Cross Schoolhouse in Niles, Michigan. So we're going to stay the weekend there do some and shenanigans because that's what we do are we is that going to be live? Where can, can you can find me you? <laughs> um i'm gonna try to do some lives i don't want to miss out on the experiences i'm supposed to have so paranormal xl podcast on facebook instagram all that fun stuff perfect so, yeah. all right well thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank you to everyone in our comments thank you to our fill in coven members uh we've gone a minute over so we have one last thing to do before we <laughs> Cut the shindig. I just want to say, Patty, take your ruby <laughs> slippers back. It was great being a host, but I'd rather be on the panel. And with that, we cackle. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs>